Well, good afternoon. Welcome to Mineral Springs Baptist Church. It's our Wednesday night Bible study time. Uh, we just want to come back to you today and just let you know we love you. We appreciate all those who are watching, who let us know that you're watching. We appreciate that so very much. And, uh, you know, I just, I think we need to open up in prayer today and pray for our nation, pray for our churches and for fellow believers. We're living in times that, uh, I believe as the Bible says, it's dangerous times, perilous times. And we need to be praying one for another, praying for our country, our leaders, especially those leaders that claimed Christ as their savior. Really pray for them that they will always stand for the cause of Christ. I pray that you would just remember us in your prayers as always, I need your prayers continually. Our church needs your prayers and we're praying for you. And so let's go to the Lord in prayer, okay? Heavenly Fathers, we come in your presence today. We thank you for all the blessings you've given us. Lord, you are so good to us. You've met every need according to your riches and glory. God, you've protected us from even those things that we have not even seen you've protected us from. God, you've given us your word as truth. You've given us Christ as our Lord and our Savior. And God, you've given us salvation by grace through faith. And God, today, as we bow our heads, we open up this word of God. We pray that, Lord, that you'd speak to our hearts. God, may we grow in encouragement through what we hear today. Lord, we know we are living in perilous times. But, Lord, we do want to pray that your kingdom would come. We want it to be done on earth as it is in heaven. We pray, Lord, if you would, that you'd help us as fellow believers to stand for you. And God, although the world may come against us and people will tell lies about us and criticize us and God, make, make, make so much over nothing. We pray that God, you'd help us to just leave it to you. God, you will fight the battles. You will take care of these things and we know that. And so God, we give it to you. It's, it's your battle, not ours. I pray that you would just bless all those who are listening this evening and maybe tomorrow, the next day. God, would you just bless them wherever they are Use us as your believers. Use us as Christians, God, to stand for truth and right in this last day. We love you so much for all that you've done, all that you're doing, and all that you're going to do. For it's in that wonderful name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Well, several weeks ago, we started a series of messages on pictures of Christ in Genesis. And we have went through a whole lot. We, we went through the beginning with Adam and Eve. We have studied that and we've looked at the uh, atonement work of Christ and what God did for Adam and Eve when they sinned and tried to cover themselves with the, the fig leaves and God would not have that. It was not good enough. It did not meet God's requirements. And we've traveled on well, just a couple weeks ago. We started into a little part of this series on Noah and the ark. And it's just been wonderful. We have seen so much about the ark as a picture of Christ. And we understand that it was a God designed plan. God planned it from the foundation of the world. He, before it was even, the world was even formed, God had already sat down and come up with this about the ark and Noah. Uh, man's part in building the physical structure of the ark was an amazing thing. Because we understand salvation is of the Lord, the atoning work is of the Lord, but God used the building of the ark, although it was God's design, God's plan, he used the ark as a picture of the incarnation of Jesus Christ. Because the Bible says that, that Christ was born of a woman. You know, I've said this before, God could have very easily just said, you're there. He just said the word and Jesus would have been here on this earth. But God had a plan. And when we look at the ark, we see that this ark, although it was God's plan, God's design, every aspect, every detail of the ark was all of God. He let Noah, he used Noah to build that. Why? Because Noah needed to build the ark because it was his salvation. It was his safety net. It was his way out of the judgment of God. And so man had to have a part in it. Just like when you come to the New Testament, we study and we see that, that in order for Jesus to be our Redeemer, he had to be man to stand in the place of a man. 
but he had to be God to bear the judgment of God. And so in this ark, we look at this ark and we see that, that God was the, the designer and the creator. But then Noah was given the part as building the physical structure. Now, also the message of salvation through the ark is supernaturally revealed. God came to Noah through, through his word, just like he does to you and me. Through his word, he came to Noah and he told Noah to build an ark. And it was also the only place of refuge. There was only one ark, only one door. We discussed that last week. And when we look at that one ark, one door, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come to the, to the Father but by me. We understand that Jesus is the door of salvation. You cannot get to heaven without Jesus Christ. You will never see the city of God if you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And I hope I got some amens on that because we're living in a world today where they're preaching and teaching all kinds of things. Tell them that you can get saved with good works, that you can get saved through uh, Allah or Buddha or Muhammad or anybody else. But there was only one ark. That means there's only one God design plan. There's only one door. There's the only way into that God design plan. And that was through Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the door. But today we want to look at a few more things. And I want to look at the fact that the Bible says in, in Genesis 6:16. 6, it says when he's given the instructions on the ark, he said, with lower, second, and third stories shall thou make it. So in other words, there was a lower level, there was a middle level, and there was an upper level to the ark. Three different levels. Now we don't know 100% for sure on the perfect, absolute, correct interpretation of this, but let me just throw something out at you for just a moment. We understand that, I mean, my personal opinion is I believe that those three levels picture God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Not in any sort of order, but I believe they picture the Trinity, the Holy Trinity. We understand that while Jesus was on this earth, he, the Bible says that he was, all the, God, all the fullness of the Godhead was in him. And I believe it's in, in Colossians chapter number two, that the Bible tells us all of the Godhead dwelled in him. That means God the Father, he was God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit dwelled in Christ. When Jesus was walking on this earth in John chapter 14, Philip asked him a question. He said, Lord, if you just show us the Father, it would suffice us. Lord, if you would just let us see God the Father, man, that's all we need to see. That's all we need. And Jesus made the comment to him. He said, he said Philip, have I been so long with you that you have not seen if you've seen me, you've seen the Father, because I and the Father are one. And so what Jesus tells Philip is what he's telling you and me. You know, we have so many people today that they believe, I've got to see God in order to believe. In order for me to believe, Jesus is going to have to appear in my very midst. Well, I want to tell you something, folks. He's not going to do that. But he'll do it through people. He'll do it through preachers. He'll do it through teachers. He'll do it through musicians and singers. He'll do it through ordinary, everyday Christians who live for Christ. You're seeing Christ in them. And I know what you're saying. Yeah, but they make mistakes. I know one that he, he man, he got drunk one time. Or I know a Christian one time and they got mad and boy, they let the words out of their mouth. Folks, that happens to everybody. There's not a person on the face of this earth other than Jesus Christ that was perfect. Yeah, I mean, look at the, King David. He committed adultery. He committed murder. He lied about it. We look at Abraham. Abraham, he, he lied. He didn't tell the truth. Moses, Moses was a murderer. So if, if you want to go through this word, you can find that everybody makes mistakes. Everybody is imperfect. But we as the born again believers in Christ need to live our life every day as close to possible as we can to Jesus because somebody's watching and somebody needs to hear. But I do believe that this three levels, the lower, second, and third floors, or story, excuse me, I believe it's a picture of the Holy Spirit. I believe that, and, and the Holy Spirit, I believe it's a picture of Jesus Christ, and I believe it's a picture of God. But then I want to look at something else, something that I think it's really, really needful for today. Um, today, what we have is so many people, and I know maybe you're watching this and you may be involved in this. You watch the news too much. 
Oh, I heard the amens on that one. Let me tell you something. When you watch the news, you can't even watch local news and get local news. All they talk about is Black Lives Matter. All they talk about is the coronavirus. And pretty much that's it. They don't go in. Well, they, of course, they have to go talk about the president and the vice president and all the, this other stuff. But where's the good news? You know, there's still good things happening in this world, but they don't tell it. And so what we do is we watch the news over and over and over and over and over again. We hear how bad this coronavirus is. We hear how dangerous it is. And we hear we've got to wear a mask. And we hear all. And what happens is if you look at the storm long enough, it's going to affect you. It's going to bring fear into your life. If you watch the, the storms enough and get your eyes off Jesus, what's going to happen is that you are going to get scared. And then when you get scared, you're of no use. You need to understand. When you study the, the building of the ark, what is absolutely amazing is, as we said, there's only one ark. There's only one door into the ark, and we know that God shut the door. He said, Noah and your, his family, come into the ark, and God shut the door. God locked the door, but guess what? There's only one window. <laughs> I was in submarines for a long time, and during my time in the submarine service, one of the most asked questions was, do you have any windows on the submarine? No, we don't. The ark only had one window, only one window. It was about an 18 inch by 18 inch window. And guess where it was? On the very top of the ark, if you'd went up to the upper level and sat there and looked right up the very top, there was a window there. Now, why would there be a window up there? You can't look out and you can't see what's going on. You can't, you can't see if there's mountains. You, 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 you can't see anything. Let me tell you why it was up there. Because God didn't want Noah and his family looking at the storms. He didn't want them looking at the waves and the wind and the billows. He didn't want them to, to see the lightning and the thunder and all. He didn't want them to see all that. He put the window in the very top of the ark so Noah and his family would look up. Not look out, but look up. Folks, I'm here to tell you today, that's what we church need to do. We need to look up. Don't look out. Don't look at me. Don't look at other Christians. Don't look at other uh, people. Look at God. Look at The Bible says keep your eyes on Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. And that's exactly what we need to be doing is looking up. There was only one window in the ark. And like I said, it was straight up. Another thing that I want you to understand. This ark is a picture of Jesus. And what it does is it, number one, keeps us safe. That was our lesson last time we studied. It was the safety of the ark. And we understand that when Jesus is in the boat, when Jesus is in the boat, you're going to make it to the other side. Absolutely, positively, there is no way around it. You and I who are saved, you and I who are born again, we will make it to glory one of these days. Amen? I'm not driving. You're not driving. We don't have no control over the ship of Zion. It's in God's hands. God is leading, guiding, directing us, and he will get us safe to the other side. But along that journey, I want you to know he did something. The Bible said in, in verse number 14 of Genesis chapter 6, he says, make rooms. Or he said, you shall, rooms shalt thou make in the ark. Now, the word rooms there is translated from the Hebrew word Cain, K-A-N-E. And that word Cain, K-A-N-E, means nest of resting place. When I heard that, my mind went immediately to John chapter 14, where Jesus says, you know, if you believe in God, believe in me, believe also in me, for in my Father's house are many mansions. I know a lot of us Christians, we get all excited thinking when we get to heaven, we're going to have a, a, a huge mansion. The word mansion means rooms. It means Cain. It means resting places. And I'm telling you that even along the journey, God gives you and me a resting place. Along our journey, even in the storms of life, God protects us. God keeps us safe. He's in control. And he gives us rest and peace and comfort along the way. And for that, I say, thank you, Lord. But then I want to go into something that is really amazing. I, this is the most 
To me, this is the most amazing fact of the whole thing. If we read and look at verse number 14, he says, make thee an ark of gopher wood. Now the word gopher there is translated in, in different words and diff different things, but it's also cypress wood is what it is. But he said, make thee an ark of gopher wood, pitch it, P-I-T-C-H, pitch it within and without with pitch. The word pitch as I'm looking at it here in the Word of God, the word pitch is translated from the Hebrew word, and it's not the usual word that you find for pitch, which is zepeth, but which is, zepeth is simply, it is a material, asphalt-like material that the Hebrew people used to pitch their houses. They would put it in the grooves of the houses because it would just it would just seal up and lock it up good and tight, and that is the word that people think it should have been there. But the Hebrew word that was there is a different word than zepeth. It was the word kapar, k a p h a r. Now, I want you to understand this: the word kapar or kopher, k o p h e r which kephar is the verb, kopher is the noun. But when you find those words in the Bible, in the Old Testament, you'll find that word 70 different times. Every time that you find that word, kephar, every time you find it in all the word of God, it is translated, not pitch, but atonement. Everywhere you read it, it's it, it, it's atonement. It's not pitch. I believe this is a God-breathed book that we have in our hand. I believe the Bible where it says that all scripture was given by inspiration of God. I believe God, it's the old saying goes, I believe God said what he meant and he meant what he said. And what I'm saying here is the word kapar also means a covering. And when you go and you start reading, and if we read verse 14 with that in mind, it would read more something, something like, thou shalt cover it within and without with atonement. Boy, it, it, ain't that amazing that the ark of Noah, Noah's ark that Noah built, that God breathed, it doesn't just mean pitch to put it up with this asphalt stuff to keep the water out, but it means a covering of atonement. I find that amazing. When you read the Bible says, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. We know that as we study the word of God, that from Genesis all the way through the book of Revelation, it takes the blood in order to be saved. It takes the blood to have an atonement. If you remember when the children of Israel were getting ready to leave Egypt, the night before they left, the Bible says that the death angel come by and said they were instructed to take a lamb, a perfect lamb, and to sacrifice that lamb and to take the blood of that lamb and put it on the doorpost and on the lintel of the house. And the Bible says, and when the death angel comes, he says, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And so every house that had the blood of that lamb was passed over by the death angel. They were saved. It, it, it covered their house with atonement. When we go through the Bible, we, we even go to back to uh, Adam and Eve. They try to cover themselves with fig leaves, and God said, ain't going to happen. It don't work. It's not, it, it's not a sacrifice. And so God killed a, a lamb himself, took the blood of that lamb, and he put it, the, the bloody skins on Adam and Eve. When you come to the New Testament, the Bible plainly teaches us that Jesus Christ shed his blood on an old rugged cross for you and for me, and that because of what he did for you and me, we have salvation full and free. It takes the blood. I'm telling you right now, it's the blood or nothing. If you don't have the blood of Jesus Christ applied to your heart and soul, you will not go to heaven. You sit there and say, oh, you want to? Well, I'm a Christian, but I don't believe in the blood. You cannot be a Christian without be believing in the blood of Jesus Christ. I just want to close it with this. The Bible says in chapter 7, verse 1 of Genesis, God speaking to Noah says, Come thou 
and all thy house into the ark. God says to Noah, you and your family, come on in. That's what Jesus is saying to you and to me today. Come on in. He is our safety. He is our complete atonement. You know, I know I sin. And I know you sin. The Bible says we all fall short of the glory of God. There's none righteous, no, not one. We've all sinned and come short. The Bible tells that even though, even though while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And folks, I'm here to tell you something. I am not perfect, but I am forgiven. I know I make mistakes. I know we all make mistakes. And we as Christians, sometimes we beat ourselves up over the mistakes. But I'm here to tell you something. When God looks down from glory and sees you and me, he sees Jesus Christ and his perfect, precious, holy, righteous blood that was shed on Calvary for you and for me. And the Bible says, even in the book of uh, Isaiah, the Bible says that we are clothed with the robe of righteousness. You see, our righteousness, as Isaiah says, is filthy rags. You and I, even on our best days, fall short of the righteousness that's required to be saved and go to heaven. But God puts a robe of righteousness on us after the blood is applied. And when God looks down from glory and he sees me, even though I make mistakes and even though I sin and come short, he sees the precious blood of his son, Jesus Christ, on an old rugged cross. And he says, forgiven. You see, because of the blood, our sins are forgiven, forgotten forever. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. And I really enjoyed this time and I enjoy coming to you. Now, today we talked about the complete atonement. The ark is a picture of that. But now next week, we're going to look at something about making it safe all the way. I hope you can join us next week. Father, thank you for this time. Thank you for your blessings. God, I pray that you would just be with everybody who's watching. Keep them safe. God, we love you. We thank you. We praise your name. And Lord, even though we go through these valleys that we're going through, even though we see what's happening in this world, God, it, it's definitely, it's definitely, there are signs definitely pointing towards your return for the church. And I pray that we as Christians would get our spiritual bags all packed up and ready to go. I pray that we would be out there witnessing like we've never be had before. I pray, God, that we would just be praying and witnessing for our loved ones and neighbors and friends that are lost. God, help us to stand for the old rugged cross in this last days. And God, I'm looking forward to the day that I'm going to see Jesus face to face. I love you. I thank you, and I appreciate this time. Be with those that are watching. Protect them, keep them safe, and encourage their hearts, Lord. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining us here at Mineral Springs Baptist Church time, and we'll see you next Wednesday night. God bless you. Bye-bye.